Hello everyone, it's Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. The historical FastGraphs tell you a lot about the history of the company, how well it's performed as a business, how reliable it's been, how consistent it's been, and what its growth rates have historically been. But the reality is you can't buy the past, you can only buy the future. So with this what they are and how they work video, I'm going to focus on how to correctly utilize the various fast grasp calculators to help you in your investment decisions as to whether you should buy, sell, or hold a given company. However, before I go directly into the forecasting calculators, I want to illustrate how important the historical graphs can be relative to whether you should even waste your time going into the forecasting calculators or not. I'm going to use General Dynamics Corporation as an example. And what you see here are some very interesting valuation situations where the price was kind of tracking earnings coming into the Great Recession. Then the price fell dramatically as most stocks did. And then this stock stayed relatively undervalued for about four years or so. And then General Dynamics more recently has rallied and now the price is significantly above the orange valuation reference or the normal PE ratio line. So this might be an example where you wouldn't necessarily be too interested in going into the company's forecasting calculators if you didn't already own it because obviously the stock looks significantly overvalued at this point in time. Now, in contrast, if we take a look at Borg Warner Inc., we see that the stock was overvalued back in 2014. It became pretty undervalued in 2015 and 16, and still looks like it's attractively valued. So at this point, you might want to say, I might be interested in looking at Borg Warner based on valuation to do some forecasting because. Remember, you can't buy the past, you can only buy the future. So let's move on down to the forecasting calculators on Borg Warner. And remember, and I'm going to go through this, there are five different forecasting calculators. Each have their own insights and their own capabilities. The first is what we call the estimates, which simply gathers consensus estimates. And in this case, Standard & Poor's Capital IQ gathers consensus estimates. And at the bottom of the graph, you'll notice there are 21 analysts that are forecasting Borg Warner to grow earnings this fiscal year, which ends in December, by 13.15%. Then there are 22 analysts that forecast in fiscal year 2018 to grow at 8 0.38% and then it drops down to nine analysts. Now, a couple of things about this, and then you'll see that for 2020, there's only five analysts. One of the things that I like to recommend is that the closer you are looking at estimates, probably the more likely they are to be reasonably accurate, although they'll never be perfect. And I think you need to understand that. But the word calculator is the key to understanding the forecasting calculator. So what we have here is a 10.1% estimated forecast going out over the next three plus years on Borg Warner, and we have different number of analysts making those forecasts. So what you can do is you have all these different PE ratio. I want you to notice that they're all parallel lines. So we've using this as the 10.1% growth rate. This baseline is a PE of 15, which would be a theoretical normal valuation for most companies growing at this rate. And then you have what I call the valuation corridor, which are these two orange lines, lighter colored orange lines below and two lighter color orange lines above. Valuation is always about a range. It's never precise. You have to use precise mathematics to create one, but this is kind of a valuation range. This would be on the low side of fair value. This would indicate being on the high side of fair value. But the thing about this is you can look at these different PE ratios that are assigned to each of these lines. So just to be clear, we're simply saying here that if Borg Warner did grow earnings at this rate and it did trade at a PE ratio of 15 by this year end. In other words, we had P-E ratio expansion. The capital appreciation would be 25.14%, as you can see here. Now, the annualized number is much bigger because your time frame is so close. However, if we go out the second year, which is about as far out as I like to go with most estimates, once again, if they earned both of these levels and the company traded at a 15 PE, your annualized rate of return would be 26.5% or a 35.6% gross number. And then, of course, you could also go all the way out to the end, sticking with this 15 PE ratio, and this would give you the rate of return. So the idea here is rather than just investing in a stock and hoping that you can make some money, these calculators are giving you an opportunity to run some calculations. For example, the stock is currently trading at a blended PE of 12 and a half. 
So you can find, you know, the orange line here is 12, the top line is 13 and a half. So you could kind of run, what if it stays at a 12-ish PE, then your rate of return would be seven and a half. If you did that going out a little further and stayed at a 12 PE, it'd be eight and a half. And then of course, if we got any PE expansion, you could get higher rates of return. So this just gives you the ability to run a lot of very quick what if calculations based on these consensus estimates. Now the second calculator is called the normal multiple calculator, which utilizes the company's historical normal PE ratio as its base fair valuation reference line. You have the same valuation corridors with different PEs, and in this case, it works out to be the same number that we were looking at before. But there's another interesting benefit to this normal PE ratio calculator. There's a drop-down window here. You can click on that, and this gives you a look at all the company's historical normal PEs for all these years. Now, it's important to point out there's no forecast data in these numbers, as there is with the historical graph and so on. This is all what the actual PEs were over these historical time frames. Now, as I analyze analyze this, you could see low PEs in the 14. The lowest was current, the one year of 13, but you see a lot of 15, 16, and 17 PEs. So you could pick, for an example, an aggressive case if you simply click on that. This line will then draw at a 17 PE, and then you can run calculations. What if it traded at a 17 PE and grew by those numbers. Now these first two calculators are based on the same set of analyst estimates and what they're what I call specific near-term estimates. Once again, I only like to go out about one or two years when I'm using these because first of all, that's where you have the largest number of analysts and obviously that's where the most clear visibility would be. But there's also a second set of analyst estimates called the three to five year trend line growth estimate. Now it's actually a different set of estimates altogether. Now in the case of Borg Warner, there are three analysts that are forecasting this company to grow trend line at 9.27%. So I want you to notice all of these growth rates here are precisely that 9.27%. But again, it's more of a long term. When you're using this calculator, I think it makes most sense to look out a little further. Now, I don't like looking out further as I already illustrated, but if you're just trying to say what would the three to five year trend line opportunity be based on at least what these analysts are saying, you can look at this trend line estimate. Now, the fourth calculator is a historical compound annual growth calculator. And what this does, instead of using analyst estimates, it allows you to utilize growth rates. And just as we saw with the normal PE, it gives you a list of historical earnings growth. Now, you can scan this and gain a couple of insights very quickly. You can see whether earnings growth has been consistent, whether it's accelerating, decelerating, et cetera. And in the case of Borg Warner, for the last four years, earnings growth has only averaged 7%. So I want you to notice that I've changed the growth rate. Now, I'm still using the same normal PE ratio calculation here, but now I've applied a growth rate of only 7%. But once again, this would be more of a trend line concept. And then finally, we have a custom calculator. If you're not comfortable with any of these other estimates as provided, you can go into the custom calculator and do a couple of things. This defaults to the trend line, three to five year trend line growth number that I showed you earlier. But you can also click this little button and combine the near term estimate which are specific with the trend line estimates going out only after the near-term estimates have been. But if you don't like that, you can also imply your own growth rate. So let's assume you don't think the nine and a quarter percent growth rate is accurate. You think this company is going to grow at 5%. You can go down here into the custom growth rate, type in the number five, hit the draw button. You're growing earnings at the rate of 5%, but you still have that custom in there. If you go back to the three to five year trend line, you can just do it as a 5% trend line. You can also, by clicking on these boxes, type in any level of earnings and or dividends you want. And you can also alter the PE of this range of lines. Let's say you think this company should trade at nothing more than a 12 PE. You could go ahead and put the 12 PE in, add that, and this becomes your calculator. Once you've settled on something you're comfortable with, this gives you the ability to run these what if calculations so you can apply specific numbers to whatever your thoughts are.
Now at this point, I'd like to take you back to the estimates calculator and look at these specific near-term analyst estimates that I talked about. There's also the very valuable analyst scorecard. Analyst estimates obviously have been notoriously maligned. Some analyst estimates are good, some are not. So for example, if I look at Borg Warner, I can click on the analyst scorecard. And this is when analysts were making an estimate one year in advance. And then I also have the option to look when analysts were making estimates two years in advance and I can see the score. I can see a summary of the score. These analysts have been right about over 70% of the time on the one-year estimate, and they've been right about 67% of the time on the two-year estimate. But then when I look at the more granularity, I can also see that some of the misses have been more recent. So this just gives me some insights into whether or not I think there's any reliability to these estimates. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. If I went into a very cyclical company, which in this case is actually in the steel business, I want you to notice that this company has a very erratic history of operating earnings growth. So when you're looking at estimates here, you see some kind of weird looking estimates. But what I really want to point out, if I look at the analyst scorecard here, and I'll just go ahead and give into the summary, the analysts are wrong 65 to 75 percent of the time, whether they're making a one or two year forecast. So I might not want to put too much emphasis on what these analysts are saying based on that scorecard. On the other hand, if I looked at a stock like Johnson & Johnson, the AAA rated blue chip, and looked at the analyst scorecard on Johnson & Johnson, I would discover that the analysts are right virtually 100% of the time. Now, this tells me a couple of things. The company gives decent guidance. The estimates have been you know, extremely accurate, etc. I recently did a discussion on NVIDIA, which has been a company that's been notorious for guiding their earnings forecasts rather low, and you can see their scorecard is rather interesting, but they still miss by 38% of the time. So whether you rely on the actual estimates or do your own custom work, the idea of these calculators, and the key word is calculator, is to give you the ability to go ahead and run some what-if numbers to determine what potential rate of returns you might be looking at if you chose a given investment. Now, I'd like to close this presentation by pointing something else out. You can utilize these other metrics, like here I'm going to look at Alphabet or Google and look at EBITDA, and you're going to see a pretty interesting valuation reference with EBITDA. And when you use the forecasting calculator for Google utilizing EBITDA, it looks very undervalued. And then when you check their scorecard to see how accurate these guys have been, you can see they've been real accurate other than the last two years. So this might give you some caution as whether or not these next couple of years might be good or not. But I also want to point out that if I go back to adjusted operating earnings, you'll quickly discover that that the estimate growth for Google going forward is about 14%, which would indicate that the stock is highly overvalued. Even if I used a normal PE, it would be highly overvalued. But the other interesting thing, when I look at the, the analyst scorecard for Google, the earnings estimates have been a lot more, historically at least, accurate than the EBITDA estimate. So you can apply this same process where you can run calculations of what your risk and rate of returns might be at these different levels, utilizing many of the other metrics when there's estimates available, as well as the adjusted operating earnings. This has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching.